welcome back to Sip and Spin. My name is Skylar and over here in a short sleeve button down striped shirt is Brittany. Hello. Not quite one of my Hawaiian dad shirts, but she's getting there. Yeah, not full dad yet. Just a little dad. We are a variety podcast where we talk about anything, everything, and nothing. I am very tired. If I sound like I'm in a bad mood, I am not. I am just sleepy. She's just so sweetie. Uh, uh, how are you today? I'm good. Good. I'm also tired. <laughs> there might be a very mellow session. <laughs> yeah. I, like I was telling her, did not get home till 3 a.m. because I ended up DDing last night. You look cute today. Thank you. I'm fancy. <laughs> Came all out. I knew since my face was going to have to be seen later, I need to do something with it. <laughs> <sighs> well... Should we just jump in? Yeah, let's do it. What are we talking about? So today we are doing our culture travel language section. So you know how this goes. I pick a language and Brittany does either culture or travel, uh, something to do that is related to it. And for drink, we got a drink we don't like. So yay. Yeah. What are you drinking? So what are you drinking? Nothing. <laughs> I don't have a drink. But a drink I don't like is not alcohol, so it fits. Is there not any beer in the fridge? <laughs> we have nothing. But I also I drank a lot yesterday. I also don't really need to drink anything yeah. today. That's fair. So well, I'll be needs. drinking a homemade blackberry infused gin. Mixed with lemonade. I mean, it doesn't sound bad, but you don't like gin. No, I don't like gin. <laughs> Thanks for that. Uh, I'm, I'm, like I said, it's going to be happening a lot. I'm so tired. I'm uh, trying to lock it up. Well, are you going to try your drink? I guess. <laughs> will you at least also try it? Yeah, I will. I don't like it. It's not bad. I mean, it's very flavorful, but I like gin. It's very strong, though, like taste-wise. Yeah, it almost tastes like fermented. <laughs> like it. I mean, in a way, you kind of did. Yeah. Fermented. <laughs> ah, maybe don't drink too much of it. It's probably fine. It's probably fine. <laughs> It'll be alright. You chose to do it. <laughs> well, I didn't know not drinking was an option. Anything else before I mispronounce a bunch of words? <laughs> nope. <laughs> All right. Las uns anafagen. Yep. Let's get started. <laughs> so, Skylar picked German, <laughs> if you couldn't tell from that. By Las uns Anafagen. <laughs> so I am going to talk about Germany a little bit. Just kind of some just cultural stereotypi- stereotypical facts, as well as then go into maybe a little bit of like folklore stuff, and then touch on, of course, you gotta talk about Oktoberfest when you talk about Germany. Just a few things like that. So, I don't have a whole lot, but... Because there's a lot, and it's just narrowing down what to talk about, because Germany has a lot going on. <laughs> there's a lot to talk about. So, diving in, uh, Germany is home to over 80 million people. I think when I looked on a specific site, it said 82 million specifically. Mm. The official language, of course, is German. Most would consider High German, or... And here's a word I don't know how to pronounce. Hochdeutsch? H-O-C-H-D-E-U-T-S-C-H, whatever that is, to be the most official version of the language. Hochdeutsch? I think it's like Deutsch. Okay. Uh, But anyway, so that's the more official version of High German, I guess. Just putting it out there. I didn't know there were differences in German. Shares borders with nine countries, those being France, Luxembourg, Denmark, Belgium, Switzerland, Austria, the Czech Republic, the Netherlands, and Poland. There are also 97 nature reserves in Germany, the biggest of which is the Black Forest. Um, It's Germany's largest wooded area near the Swiss border and is a mountainous region full of pines and fir trees. Germany is known for its long and rich history, a history that has been put at the forefront of European thought, politics, and art for over a thousand years. Their history has shaped a culture that combines 
predominantly uh, Christian values with literature, art, logic, and reason. And while it is a predominantly Christian country, it does have a diverse array of religions throughout the country. If you visit Germany from the US, the UK, or Latin America, you may initially be surprised by the directness of German people. Just know that in pretty much all cases, this is not meant to be rude or to offend, and that they really just like to have a culture that encourages open honesty, openness, and sincerity, and they kind of just avoid polite superficiality. So they'll just tell you how it is. Germany shares a lot of culture and tradition with neighboring countries, especially Austria and Switzerland. An important thing to know about German culture is that the residents are expected to respect order and structure. So they're very big rule followers. They don't like to deviate from that. It's very important to be on time, not only for work, but for social events too. Something my friends would not be good at <laughs> in Germany. No one is ever on fucking time. But they would be shunned in Germany. Because <laughs> like game night starts at 7. I roll up at like 7.15. Elena gets there either really early or like an hour and a half later. And Sydney's there typically like two to three hours late. <laughs> yeah. That would be very frowned upon in, uh, in Germany. Uh, it's also very important to follow the rules that are in place for the greater good of everybody. So they're very sticklers for punctuality and just following the rules and doing what you're supposed to. It was originally a pagan country and then an important seat of the Holy Roman Empire. Germany was also the birthplace of the Protestant Reformation. Other things German culture is widely known for, uh, good beer, and like obviously Oktoberfest, which I am going to talk about more later on. Sausage is something that always comes to mind when people are like, oh, Germany. Also, uh, pretzels. Hiking, traditional oompa, folk music, and holiday making. Famous names that are also important cultural symbols include Beethoven, Paul Klee, Immanuel Kant, Karl Marx, and many people would quite seriously argue that David Hasselhoff should also be a part on this list of philosophers and artists <laughs> and composers. And I'm like, all right. <laughs> And, like, I thought they were joking when I was reading it, and they were like, no, like, seriously, they want, like, they respect David Hasselhoff. And I'm like, all right, bet. Cool. <laughs> He's an important cultural symbol. <laughs> He's in Spongebob. That's, that's what happens. <laughs> He's in a lot, yeah. Including Spongebob. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's what got him on the list of German importance. Uh, Germany can be considered a modern and advanced society in a lot of ways. It has some of the most progressive politics regarding gender equality, LGBT rights, and immigration. 75% of Germany's population are urban dwellers, and it is in these urban areas where you will find the most liberal attitudes concerning all of the above. For decades, Germany has shown its commitment to renewable energy and protecting the environment. For a long time, they have been at the forefront of pioneering new technology to help in the war against fossil fuels, CO2 emissions, and pollution. They also have a very strict and dedicated garbage recycling system. Um, it's one of the most thorough in the world. So if you ever visit Germany, they're very specific of like where you have to recycle each specific thing. And they have all the different colored cans. I read like if you ever plan to move to Germany, that's one of the biggest things you need to familiar yourself with is learning what how to recycle your trash because they take it very seriously, which I love. That's mm -hmm. great. I wish more places would. Uh, most Germans neither live to work nor work to live. The average working week in Germany is around 35 to 40 hours, and it's one of the lowest in all of Europe. Productivity, though, is one of the highest. So, it goes both ways. That makes sense, you know. Give your employees, like, space and time to be happy, and they... <laughs> yeah, no one should live to work or work to live. It's just, yeah. it's a very twisted mentality. But that's not here nor there. Just look at, but Germany's doing it, and it's working is on people's mind the least there. Unless you love your job, and that's fine, because they are also very good at following the rules and doing what they're supposed to, but it's not all there is. Germany is one of the biggest producers of board games, and has been responsible for the invention of many of the biggest names in strategy-based board games, which are sometimes called Euro games, which I did not know, but that's what that was. Some of those include The Settlers of Catan and Ticket to Ride, which are two very popular board games. Many Germans are passionate about international travel and take foreign holidays, and taking foreign holidays is an important part of the lifestyle. Germany actually spends more per capita on international travel than any other country in Europe. Can you guess where the three biggest holiday destinations are? France, Italy, 
Italy is one of them. Mm-hmm. Okay. The Netherlands, so like Sweden, Finland. Yeah. <laughs> I'm stuck. Yeah. So the biggest holiday destinations being uh, Italy, Spain, and Austria. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. So those are the, the big three, apparently. A third of all German residents belong to a sports club or organization also, which I always thought that was interesting. And I got to think of it, I was like, no, they really do like sports there. That kind of makes sense, actually. And hundreds of thousands watch football, ice hockey, and handball games every single week. So take their sports very seriously. They also take meat very seriously. So meat in Germany is very popular and is typically eaten with most meals, along with bread and potatoes. On a day-to-day basis, a cooked breakfast, a cooked lunch, and a dinner of bread, ham, cheese, and pickle could be considered typical. Dining out is also really popular in Germany. Alcohol consumption is fairly high and is enjoyed both in bars and in the home. By far, the most popular drink is beer. beer. No one's surprised. Follow then by wine, schnapps, and brandy. Nice. Yeah, I was like, all right, schnapps is up there really hot, <laughs> but you do you, Jeremy. Yeah, I feel like schnapps is really only used here to, like, mix with other stuff. Like, no one is just out there drinking schnapps, really. Apparently in Germany they are. <laughs> They're just looking, they get fucked. <laughs> Germans take great pride in their like, cars. Let's party. Jar of peach or bottle of peach schnapps just on the uh, table. <laughs> or peppermint schnapps. Oh, God. oh dear. <laughs> That's how you have a real good party. Germans take great pride in their cars, which this makes sense, of course, since it's the country that invented the modern motor car and is home of Audi, Volkswagen, Porsche, Mercedes, and BMW. So driving in Germany is seen as a nice and relaxing pastime. As well as a means to an end, um, it's even more enjoyable since they are known to have excellent road sit network and no speed limit on 65% of the highways. Nice. So you can just go how fast you want. Good. This is, <laughs> this is what I needed. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, mm, how do I get to Germany now? <laughs> no speed limit? Yes, please. So those were just some like, overall kind of Germany specific uh, now I'll talk a little bit about Oktoberfest, since a lot of people, that's one of the bigger things they know about, like, especially Germany nowadays. They want to go, because you want to go to Oktoberfest. Oktoberfest? Oktoberfest? <laughs> Oktoberfest takes place in Munich. It takes place on the, and this is another word I'm not going to pronounce. I'll just let you read it. It's the first red squiggle. Theresienweise? 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 Sure. It takes place on the... Theresien Weise, and has so for over 200 years. This area is a large field where the first ever Oktoberfest was held, which is all, aka the wedding celebration between Prince Ludwig and Princess Theresa, Te- Theresa, or however you say her name. Whatever, it's, this place is named after her, so however you say her name and then add the last part is what this place is, because it literally means her meadow, Theresa's meadow, or whatever. Um, and it was named for the bride, so that's it's probably like Teresa. Like that's what I thought, but it also doesn't look like it's spelled like Teresa. Like I don't know, like, <laughs> I don't know her name, but it was named for her, and this is where, since their wedding, it's been held there for over two hundred years. So that is the only official place for Oktoberfest. Uh, it takes place at the end of September and lasts for sixteen to eighteen days, depending on the year. Hmm. Why that is? So it typically ends on the first Sunday in October. But if the 16th day of the festival falls before October 3rd, the party is extended until October 3rd. Gotcha. This is because October 3rd is the national holiday known as Germany Unity Day, or German Unity Day, uh, the day commemorating the anniversary of German reunification in 1990. So they draw out Oktoberfest until it coincides with that, and that can be either 16 to 18 days, depending. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're just like, what day is it? No, nope, we got to keep on partying, guys. <laughs> Not October 3rd yet. And I'm like, love that for them. You just get to draw out the party. Uh, there are typically 14 major bin- beer tents at Oktoberfest. I think I read that this year it's actually going to be 17. Um, and they each have their like own personality and brand of fun. There are also more than 20 small beer tents, each with a different theme, be it from dumplings to seafood, poultry, cheese, and more. So they have to like revolve around these their different specific theme tents, which I think is really fun. 
Like, I want to go to a cheese-themed tent. Like, please, <laughs> can I? The only beer served at Oktoberfest must be brewed within the city limits of Munich and is a traditional Marzen-style lager whose actual style is just called Oktoberfest. So that's the only beer that can be sold, sold there. It's made exclusively for the festival and sold only by the leader in mugs known as Mass. They're huge and heavy. So you're just whipping out little liters of beer each time you get a beer. And I'm like, no wonder they're so drunk. (laughs) And then where this is, is Munich. So just two fun little Munich facts that I thought were interesting. You can zip line across the roof of the Olympic Stadium in Munich. So that seems like someone to do great when you're drunk at Oktoberfest. You're like, let's go zip line across the roof of the Olympic Stadium. Munich's English Garden is also one of Europe's largest urban parks, and in some sections of the park, full nudity is completely legal, legal and alcohol is generally accepted in the whole park. Nice. So they have a partially nude uh, garden, and you can just look up, and I was just re- reading people who, I read a few blogs, people who were traveling there, and they did, like, the nudity thing, and they were just legit just chilling in the grass of this park, and you can see all these other people just chilling, some close, some not, it's like, all right. They're vibing. And then just like a full glass of wine, a full bottle of wine. I was like, all right. Sounds fun. Cool. (laughs) (laughs) Everyone just living their life. Yeah. Now a little bit on just like some folklore, folk tales, legends, myths, etc. So um, Germany is the birthplace of, of course, the Grimm brothers and home to many fairy tale characters, including Rapunzel, Little Red Riding Hood, Rumpelstiltskin, Snow White, and Sleeping Beauty. So that just, you know, we all know those. Uh, but a few that we might not know is according to legend is it Morphbog? Morphbog? Mm. M-O-R-B-A-C-H it's a place yeah. Morbach. Morbach is the last place a werewolf was killed around 1988 a single candle burns in the village as a reminder but also a warning so one night according to legend uh, the candle went out, and a wolf-like figure was spotted standing at a U.S. airbase there. Um, he stood staring at the soldiers before returning to the forest. The candle was relit and has never gone out since. According to the townsfolk, if the candle ever goes out, the werewolf will return. Hmm. And, like, there's pictures that when I was reading about this, and it looks like a creepy-ass place. I was like, I could see a werewolf in there. <laughs> that makes sense. If there's going to be a werewolf any there, <laughs> anywhere, it's going to be there. It checks out. And I'm just like... Man, I wonder how many people try to blow out the candle. But that's someone's probably job is just lighting that candle. Like <laughs> making, making sure, sure it stays it never lit. goes out. It's like, I, I want that job. <laughs> just fuck with people. <laughs> Be like, I can't find the candle. Just kidding. There it is. <laughs> Whoops. Another little folk tale of the locals. So according to uh, German folklore, atop a steep rock on the Rhine River, there once lived an exquisite nymph named Lorelei. She dressed in white and wore a wreath of stars in her hair. She was stunningly beautiful and had a haunting and hypnotizing siren song that no sailor could resist. Legend says that no no sailor who tried to wreak Lorelei ever returned. Instead, they would meet their fatal fate by crashing against the rocks. And there is now, like today, a statue of Lorelei up above um, the waters on the rocks, looking over the the treacherous water. Yes, queen. I was like, that ties in nicely to when I talked about siren songs and stuff. But mm-hmm. yeah, so they have a Lorelei. Something else that kind of goes back to a few episodes ago for us. In the small town of Hamlin in Lower Saxony is also where the town mayor, who refused to pay the Pied Piper for luring all the rats away, and then masses of children disappeared at the same time without a trace. It's also in Germany. There is now a statue also of the Pied Piper in Hamlin. So they really like to just make statues of these people that terrify and <laughs> torment them. I'm like, that's fair. You know, you gotta make sure that they know that you respect them now, hopefully. This is probably why they're so strict for the rules. <laughs> they're like, <laughs> yeah, we fucked up in the past. We didn't pay the Piper and all the children disappeared. We have the sailors kept dying. <laughs> <laughs> we have to follow the rules. Well, and finally, I, like I said, I don't have a whole lot. But it's like when are... Christine talks about how she was told all of those <laughs> German cautionary tales. I know, I was going to do all of that, but then I thought I had too much, but I just flew through these, so I probably could have done that. But I was going to do more, like, German weird tales that people, mm-hmm. children are told, but... Because I know there's so many. 
and there's a lot more like mythology and folklore stuff that I would have liked to go into, but I figure it's a bonus those... episode for the YouTube. Yeah, <laughs> but I figure since those two kind of tied in with our random episode, I was like, ah, yeah, I'll just throw these out there. And then just a few other more random facts to close it out. University is free for everyone in Germany, um, even if you're not German. There are over 2,100 castles in Germany, which ties in again to all of, like, the fairy tales and the folklore. It's always very heavily influenced by a lot of the castles in the area. The first printed book was in German. Germany is one of the world's leading book nations, and they publish around 94,000 titles every year. The first magazine ever seen was launched in 1663 in Germany. German is the most widely taught third language across the world. A German word, I won't even try to pronounce it, is the longest word to be published, and it is 79 letters long. Oh, hell no. (laughs) So I'm not even going to ask you to pronounce it, but I just thought it was a neat fact. Uh, But the literal meaning of it is the Association for Subordinate Officials of the Head Office Management of the Dunaby Steamboat Electrical Service. But it's a coinage of strung together... That, like, was more for fun, I think, just to get in, like, the Guinness World Record book Mm -hmm. rather than necessity. It's not, like, an everyday word people are just throwing around. (laughs) Um, They were just like, hey, we technically can string all (laughs) these letters together and it makes a word. They were like, let's do that. (laughs) Yeah. There are 35 dialects of the German language. Beer is considered a food in Bavaria officially. To get one beer in Germany, you show your thumb. If you show your pointer finger, it means you want two beers Mm. when you go to a bar. The Christmas tree tradition came from Germany. Toilet paper in Germany has the softness and consistency of paper towels. Which, I don't love that. Yeah. I was like, hmm. I'm thinking about, like, our, like, bounty paper towels, and I'm like, I don't know about that. (laughs) Yeah, like, unless they have different, like, I don't know. Maybe their paper towels are different, but the last thing I want to do is see these, yeah. like, bounty paper towels. This doesn't sound like a fun time. <laughs> yeah. oh, I thought this was fun. Most taxis in Germany are Mercedes. Oh, cool. <laughs> so, that's nice. And finally, in Germany, there's no punishment for a prisoner who tries to escape from jail because it is a basic human instinct to be free, is what they Aww. claim. So they don't punish you if you try to escape. I'm assuming That's they're like, sweet. you gotta come back, but <laughs> yeah, like, we're not gonna punish you harder. <laughs> like, you can't exactly, like, <laughs> let your prisoner go, <laughs> yeah, but... <laughs> but... If you get caught trying to escape, like... They're like, oh, come come on, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> nice try. We get it, but, like... <laughs> You'll get us next time. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that's a very light dive into uh, culture, just because, like I said, there is a lot. There's so many different things I could have branched off on, but I figured I'd just keep it a little broad. Mm-hmm. And plus, I figured you might have a lot to get through, so I was like, do mine quick. <laughs> yeah, I got a, a little bit now. Once again, as I say before, all of these episodes, I am completely self-taught. There are things that could be wrong. Or at least the pronunciation, especially because for me, so far, the vocabulary and grammar has been super easy for me to catch on to. Pronunciation, not so much. <laughs> I, I'd be struggling just a little bit. I mean, hey. And I was, and I have a friend in Germany. His name is Alan. And he was going to help me with my pronunciation. But we have not gotten a chance to, like, meet up and um, talk and have him help me practice. So we're just freeballing it. <laughs> Love it. Let's do it. Okie dokie. So... <laughs> These are just some like quick fun facts about the German language as it, in of itself. So German uses the Latin alphabet, um, and the sentences follow a subject-verb order. So similar to English, you know, subject-verb. Yeah. But questions have a verb-subject or adverb-verb-subject order. Okay. So in questions, it's flipped around. German has gendered nouns, most like all Romance languages do, like French, yeah. Spanish, Italian. Uh, They have masculine, feminine, and neutral. All nouns are capitalized, even if they're improper. Hmm. So, like, any noun. (laughs) Okay. The word I, or ich, is only capitalized if it's the first word of the sentence. Okay. And then, fun fact, other than Dutch, German is one of the easiest languages for English speakers to learn. 
So a uh, little quick pronunciation guide. Most of it's pretty much the same, mm -hmm. um, or at least similar. Now there is um, another uh, additional letter. It's called the azet or SZ, um, and it is like a B shape, but it makes like a sharp S sound, like a hiss. Mm -hmm. And then W is closer to like the English V, and then V is closer to the English F. R is one of the harder ones for me to pronounce because you kind of roll your R's, um, except like at the end of the word, it makes an ah sound. So if the last letter of a word is R, it's like ah. Hmm. And, and then you've got the umlauts, uh, which are the two dots. So like the two dots above an, the umlaut above an A makes like an eh sound. And then the umlaut above the O is like, you shape your mouth like O, but instead of going O, it's like more open so it's like oh and then the umlaut above the u is more of a oo sound and then you've got the ch sound and there are three different ways you can say it so like an a and o or a u before ch it's like at the end the ch makes like a like it's very throttle yeah throttle yeah throttle yeah <laughs> I mean, not like a, like a car. <laughs> ah, I get what you mean. Yeah. And then, like, in, if there's, like, an L, an R, an N b before the CH is soft, so, like, ish is kind of, like, in the middle, ish. Yeah. It's, um, and then an S after a CH, it makes, like, a K sound. So there are three different ways you can say it. Okay. Yes. So that is that. Like I said, <laughs> the pronunciation is the hardest thing for me. So if anyone wants to, uh, all the definitions I'm giving you are correct. <laughs> <laughs> She's got that. <laughs> I've got the vocabulary and the grammar down. All of that is correct. The pronunciation is just not going to be exceptional, but it'll be all right. <laughs> to start off, we're going to do hellos and goodbyes. So to say hello as like an actual hello, it's hello. Okay. Hello. And just with an A instead of an E. But there are different ways to say it. Um, so in Northern Germany, you say Moin Moin. That's and fun. then in Southern Germany, Austria, and South Tyrol, it's Gruß Gott. And so good morning is Guten Morgen. Mm -hmm. Good day is Guten Tag, mm -hmm. which is probably the other one that most people have heard. Like, Guten yeah. Tag. That's good day. And it can, it can also be like good afternoon, but good day and then good evening is guten abend guten abend and then good night is gute nacht hmm. and the reason that all of the other ones are like guten morgen guten tag guten abend and then you have gute nacht is because morgen tag abend and nacht are all nouns so which means they're all either feminine masculine or neutral well, morgen, tag, and abend, so morning, day, and evening, are all masculine nouns. So it's the adverb, good, are, is, you know, you change the adverb to modify mm -hmm. whatever the subject or the verb that comes after it. So it's masculine, which is guten, and then nacht is feminine, so it's gute. Okay. To say, like, goodbye... There are two ways. Now, there's the formal way, which is off weidersen, but even though that's considered formal, and there's the informal, which is like by is tschüss, most people don't ever say off weiderheisen or off weidersen unless it's like not even in a formal setting. Like most people just say tschüss. Okay. Yeah. No one really ever uses the other one. <laughs> gotcha. So, in a way for, like, the guten tag, hallo, like, you know, mm -hmm. how it's good day. It's kind of like bonjour versus salut, you know? Yeah. Like, most people will say bonjour just, like, you know, as kind of like a hello versus, like, salut, which is actually hello. Yeah. And, like, hallo. Subject pronouns. That's what we're on to next. So, that's just a quick way to say, like, good morning, just, like, as a yeah. greeting. So, the first person singular for, like, I is ich. And then second person you is either do or see. And do would be the informal. See would be the formal. And it's like S-I-E. Okay. And then third person, you have er, see, es for he, she, or it. Mm -hmm. And then first person plural for we is wir. 
And then second person, plural, for you, or like you all, would be ear or see once more. So it would be ear for plural or like y'all. But then it's the same C is as formal as okay. it would be in a singular. And then third person, they, is C as well. Huh. So like if I was going to say like my name is Skylar, it would be Ikaisa Skylar. And then to say your name is Brittany, you know, we would have to conjugate it. So it would be Du heist Brittany. Hmm. And then to ask what is someone's name, you'd say Wie heist du? And then heißen is the non-conjugated verb, and that means to be called. So it's very similar to French and Spanish, yeah. how like me amo or je m'appelle. It doesn't mean like my name is. It means like I am called. Yeah. So it's the same in German. So first person, you would say ich heiße, or you'd say du heißt, er sie es heißt, wir heißen, ihr heißt, or sie heißen. Or the six conjugations. And then you also have the verb seen, which is to be. And so that is an irregular conjugation, much like it is in Latin, Spanish, French. It's an irregular conjugation. So first person would be ich bin. Mm -hmm. The second person singular would be du bist. And then third person would be er, sie, es, ist. Plural first person would be weder sind. A second person plural would be eder sieht. And then third person plural would be sie sind. And then just another example of conjugation, just to get used to it, because I always like to do it in sets of three for conjugations, because um, I think it's good to get like three very common ones, mm -hmm. um, just so that way you can yeah. kind of... So then the next one would be haben, which uses the actual letter B, so it's not an S, even mm -hmm. though... Because the other ones all use the... Or at least um, heisa or heisen uses the... S set, so the B that makes the S sound. Yeah. But this is haben, which is to have. So singular first person would be ich hab, so I have. Then second person would be du hast, you have. Third person, ihr, sie, es, hat, so he, she, it, has. First person plural, wir haben, so we have. Second person, ihr habt, you all have. And then third person, sie haben, they have. So those are just some basic verbs and conjugations. Yeah. I think it's going well so far. <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> so another good thing to always know at the beginning, how are you phrases and responses. So to ask someone, how are you, you would say, wie geht's? And it's spelled with a W, so W-I-E, but since it's pronounced, it'd be wie geht's. So to say great, you could say prima. Mm -hmm. To say good, you'd say gut, just like, you know, gut yeah. and Morgan. Very good would be sehr gut. And then to say miserable, it's miserabel. All right. <laughs> say bad, it's schlecht. Say not good, you'd say nicht gut. And then to say okay, you would say ganz gut. And then to say, oh, it's all right, or oh, I'm all right, es geht so. All right. Mm -hmm. Much like... All the other romance languages, you have definitive articles, or definite articles, that go before nouns based on whether or not they're singular, plural, masculine, feminine. So, the singular masculine definite article, which is, a definite article is the, mm -hmm. then an indefinite article is a, an. Um, so, sing, singular masculine is der, so der junge is the boy, um, singular feminine is D, so die Frau is the woman, and then singular neutral is das, so das Mädchen, the girl. And then to say plural the, you just use D for everything. Okay. So even though like der Junge is the boy, if you wanted to say the boys, you would say D Junge, even though it's... The same. Yeah. So indefinite articles A an, so for singular masculine it's ein, so ein man means a man. Singular feminine is eine, so eine Frau is a woman, and then singular neutral is ein, so ein Mädchen, the girl. Okay. So to form questions, you know, we kind of talked about that earlier. Word order in German is subject, verb, object, much like it is in English, but when it comes to, oh, and for example, der Junge spielt Fußball, or Fußball. I can't tell if I actually wrote a B or if I wrote an S at Oh no. <laughs> I think it's an asset. Okay. Fusal. Der Junge Fusal. 
the boy plays, or der Junge spielt Fußball. The boy plays soccer. Okay. So when I first did this, I kept writing football because to me, <laughs> I was like, and I was thinking in my head the whole time, I was like, oh, football, like football. And then I had to translate because I was like, no, I can't. I was like, I will keep saying this. <laughs> We're the only country that calls this I know. Football. I know. <laughs> So, but there are two ways to ask a question in German. So one is to switch the subject and the verb. So where it's der Junge spielt Fussel versus spielt der Junge Fussel. So just changing that around turns it into a question. So we put the spielt, which means play, before the subject, which is the boy. Mm-hmm. Or you can use the um, interrogative adverbs. So who is wer? What is was? Where is wo? When is wann? Why is warum? And then how is wie? So wie gets? How are you? Okay. And then like, wie heist is how is called? How is something called? Wie heist dot 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 means how is something called? Okay. So the word order for these question phrases would be: first, you would use the interrogative adverb. Then the second, you would use the verb. So like V is the interrogative adverb. Then heist would be the verb. And then third would be either the subject. And then fourth would be the object. So warum spielt der Junge Fussel would be why does the boy play soccer? So we've got the interrogative adverb, why, warum, and then spielt, play, der Junge, and that's the subject. And then Fussel, the object, football or soccer. So yes, just to reiterate, the verb always comes second in the sentence unless it's in a question, and the subject is always going to be right next to the verb, even if it comes before or after, depending on if it's just a regular sentence or a question, the subject will be always right next to the verb. Okay. So like, der Junge spielt am Montag Fussel, the boy played soccer on Monday, or you could say am Montag spielt der Junge Fussel, on Monday the boy played soccer, but nonetheless the subject and the verb are right next to each other. Which I think is like pretty good. So a lot of times when learning a new language, grammar is typically the hardest part to like, and like sentence order is typically really mm-hmm. hard to keep track of and get down. But so far in German, it's, it's not that bad. I'm yeah. like, oh, this actually kind of makes sense. Yeah. Um, some other basic common phrases and words that are, you know, just good to have under your belt. Yes is ja. No is nein. And then you've got your um, conjunctions. Yes, conjunctions. Yeah, conjunctions. Okay. <laughs> I had to sing the schoolhouse rock, <laughs> rock song for a second. <laughs> so, and is und, but is aber, or is oder, and then also is auch. Then um, some other common ones would be please, which is bitte, thank you, danke, sorry is tut mir lied. I know I did numbers last time, so we're going to do numbers again this time. I don't know if y'all like the numbers part being in the first lesson, but I just done that, did that with Mandarin, and so I'm just kind of stuck to it ever since then. Okay. So one is eins, two is zwe, three is dre, four is vier, five is fünf, six is sex, seven is seven, eight acht, nine nun. 10 zen and then 11 is elf 12 is zwolf and then so the phrase 10 zen is kind of like teen so when you get up to 13 you say three teen like three ten mm-hmm. uh dreisen and then 14 is uh fiercen 15 is funsen and then zig is equal to a decade so 20 would be zwanzig 40 would be fierzig 70 would be Siebzig. Okay. And then, like, some special things, like, where you drop, like, you know, six is um, sex with the S at the end, but then 16 is sexin. Okay. So you drop the S. And then 60 is sexzig. Drop the S. And then 30 is dry, but you don't say dry zig. You say dry sig, and you use that S zet. Okay. And then to say 21, you just kind of mush it together so you'd say ein und zwanzig one and twenty okay and then so a hundred is hindert a thousand is tossend so to say two thousand nine hundred eighty four you literally just smash it all together like you just go down the list so you would say 
you would say zwei tausend, which is 2000, nun hundert, 900, vier, four, und achtzig. 80. So 2,904 and 80. All right. You just very straightforward. Mash it all together. <laughs> Fair enough. Yes. And then family words. So son is son. Daughter is tochter. Father is vater. Uh, mother is mutter. Grandfather is grasvater. Grandmother is grasmutter. Grandpa. Um, so like grandfather, grandmother versus grandpa, which is opa. And then grandma, which is oma. And then brother is bruder, or brother. Sister is schwester. And then to say siblings, you would say geschwest, gesch, geschwester. Ah, good lord. Geschwester. Geschwester. To say siblings. Okay. Grandson, it, grandson is uncle. Granddaughter, onkelin. Husband, man. Wife, frau. Uncle, uncle. Aunt, tante. And then to like informal, um, you could say for... Mutter is, you could say Muti or Mama, um, mm-hmm. and then Papa for Fater. Okay. So if I was going to say, like, my son's name is Alan, I would say, mein son heißt Alan. <laughs> to bring, him, bring it all back. <laughs> <laughs> and using the word mine, that brings us into possessives. So to say singular first person, so my would be mine. Uh, to say your would be dine or ear. And then to say... His, you'd say sign, she, ear, or like hers, and then its uh, would be sign. To say our would be unser. To say your, uh, plural, it'd be uer or ear, and then to say their would be ear hmm. as well. Right. Yeah, that's German. <laughs> oh, nice. No, I think you did fine. It sounded German. It, sa- it sounded like it was mainly German. <laughs> I mean, it really doesn't seem all that complicated. Like, you just have to learn it, yeah. Yeah, it's just, um, like, a lot of the vocabulary is, like, because I've been um, using, you know, my drops lately. Um, I've been, which is, like, you do a five-minute lesson every day, and it teaches you new vocab. But then I've also been using Duolingo to help with vocab and um, grammar to see, like, sentence structure and stuff. And then I also have a book that I've been learning from, and so far, like, the vocabulary and grammar, like, I am killing it right now. But anytime on Duolingo it asks me to do, like, say this sentence, I'm like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, you little bird. <laughs> I'm like, can I just write it? <laughs> I can really write it. I'm really good at that. <laughs> I've done really well at writing German. <laughs> no, it sounded fine. It sounded good. But yeah, so if anyone wants to <laughs> teach me and correct me, I will gladly take it. Like I said, whenever I do these, it's all self-taught. Please do not use this as an actual German lesson to like, if you are trying to become fluent or get an A on your final, please do not use this as... <laughs> Don't use this for anything knowledge-wise, <laughs> truly. Yeah, like this is completely self-taught. I'm just learning it because I think it's fun. And so if there's anyone out there who is like, hey, I know better than you, and this is actually ha- actually how you say it, please do tell me. <laughs> we won't argue that uh, you know more. Yeah, us. I will definitely believe you. I'll be <laughs> like, okay, cool. And I will take your word as gospel. <laughs> yes. But no, good job. Did you learn anything? <laughs> I think so. I mean, yeah. Like I said, it sounded very familiar to like learning mm-hmm. French or something. So yeah. it was easy to be like, oh, okay. Oh, I can see that. And like, the numbers were very straightforward. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, I like when the numbers are very straightforward. Because <laughs> I feel like there are sometimes in, like, oh, gosh. Which, I feel like, for me, French, the numbers were, like, you had to do, like, math to get your numbers. And I was like, why do that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They got a little funny. Whereas, in literally, French. in this one, you just put the word for two <laughs> in front of the word for thousand. And you don't have to do any math. <laughs> That is handy, yeah. <laughs> yeah, whereas in French, I remember distinctly having to do math to say numbers in French. And I was like, why? Yeah, why? <laughs> I know we use numbers for math, but we don't have to do math to get numbers. <laughs> to see their name. <laughs> <laughs> to get the name of the number. Well, She's funking that tail. I know. <laughs> you hear drums in the background. It's just my cat. It's what she do. Uh-oh. Hello. Uh-oh. 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 What? I can't get our drink wheel. Oh. Oh, okay.
Okay. Did you get it? Yeah. Okay. I just went back and then clicked on it again. Sometimes it's all it takes. <laughs> it needs a second to exist. <laughs> Same. It was like, oh shit, they're back. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Are we ready to spin? Oh, I guess. I'm scared. Wait, did we sp- we spin first, right? <laughs> you do this every time here lately. Like, like, how do we do this? <laughs> okay, let's go. What the hell did that land on? What does that say? Oh, that's our blink one. Oh. We don't have anything <laughs> for So our topic for next week is internet. Yeah. We'll figure out what that means <laughs> when we present it to you. <laughs> I think when we talked about it, there might be some like, uh, am I the asshole Reddit thread judgments? Like, things there might like be a that. lot of Reddit. I could see Reddit yeah, being a good yeah, pool like to pull from. Reddit threads or things like that. Or might I just be like, hey, I saw this really weird thing on the internet. Let me tell you about it. It, yeah. might, be, it might be a little similar to random, but it's going to maybe have an, an internet predom like basis yes whereas like random can be absolutely anything but internet yeah. as long as it's source material comes from the internet then yeah and like reddit is very internet so yeah <laughs> stuff like that i and think is what we need drink will be britney's choice oh goodness all right uh... it has not been your choice in a hot minute yeah i don't even know what drinks i like okay <laughs> <laughs> haven't had to pick i'll think of something we got time But, yeah. So, internet and my choice. All right. Very good. (laughs) Well, let's get out of here. Do your thing. So, thank you, everyone, for listening. Um, If you would like to find the podcast, you can find us at Sip and Spin Pod on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. And then if you would like to email us about anything, you can email us at sipandspinpod at gmail.com. If you'd like to find Brittany, her social media is Whimsy Dream or Whimsy Dreams. And then mine is GleamYKS on everything. But once again, all three link trees will be down in the description below. Yes. Thanks again. Hopefully maybe you learned a little something something. About (laughs) Germany or about German language. Uh, Next episode might be weird. (laughs) Hope you're ready to sip with us then. Yeah, we'll see what happens next week. (laughs) (laughs) Who knows? Maybe everything will turn into a dumpster fire and we won't be back ever. (laughs) There's no telling. I mean, that's what happens with the internet. (laughs) Yeah. Skylar might have just jinxed it. (laughs) This could be a risk. (laughs) But it's a risk we're willing to take for your entertainment. (laughs) We'll do it all for you. Please keep listening to us.